So you're trying to create a data validation list from a table using the table and column name. Unfortunately, you keep getting an error message, but don't give up because in this video, we're looking at four methods to solve this problem. Now make sure you watch to the end because each method has different strengths and we want to make sure that you select the correct method for your scenario. So if you're ready, let's get started. I'm sure I don't need to tell you about the benefits of using tables inside Excel. Automatic data expansion, calculated columns using structured references inside formulas, and the fact that Power Query outputs a table. All of this means that tables and data validation should be a perfect mix. The fact they don't work seamlessly might be a bit of an oversight by Microsoft. But don't worry, in a few moments, we'll have a solution that works for your scenario. Rather than using structured references, we can just use standard cell references. So here I can select my range and I'm going to select A2 to A7. And you're probably thinking this won't work because it's just standard cell references, but it does. If we add tiger to the table, in the background, Excel knows that the range and the table are tied together. So therefore, if we add a new item, it automatically expands our data validation range. But don't get excited about how easy this is. There is a problem, a big problem. And that problem is the fact that if our data validation list is on a separate worksheet to our table, that when we update our table, our data validation list doesn't expand. So we have the first option, standard references, which works unless of course, we have our data validation list and our table on separate sheets. Hi there, I'm Mark from Excel Off The Grid. That's the place where we teach people how to reclaim huge amounts of time by automating their work with Excel. So that means they don't need to work late anymore and they get to spend more time doing what they love. So why not head over to excelofthegrid.com and check out our training courses. The indirect function converts text into a range and we can use this function inside a data validation list. So for the source of the data validation list, we can enter equals indirect, then enter an opening bracket. And in double quotes, we can enter the name of the table and the column name as text and then end with a close bracket. And that's it, we're done. Tables have a workbook scope. Therefore, it doesn't matter which worksheet the table is on, our data validation list automatically expands. That's pretty awesome, right? Well, maybe there's a bit of a problem. The problem is that if we rename our table or our column, that our data validation list will break. So that's option number two, where we have indirect, it works, unless we want to change the name of our table or our column. Named ranges can hold table structured references and data validation lists can hold named ranges. Therefore, with this two-step approach, we can create a much more robust solution. So here in Excel, we can go to formulas and then create a named range. I'm going to call this my DV list and I'm going to use my table name and column name. So that's created my named range. Now, when we head over into the data validation list, we can press F3, that brings up the named ranges and then we can use that named range inside our data validation list. And if we add a new item, that will expand. It works across sheets and it also works if our table or column names change. So it's a two-step process, but it gives us a more robust solution. If you have Excel 2021 or Excel 365, there is another robust option. We can create a spill range by entering the structured reference into a cell. So here we have a spill range from F2 to F7. For the data validation source, we only need to reference the first cell inside that spill range. So I'll enter F2 followed by hash. This also works across sheets and it updates if we add a new record into our table. So there we have a second method which updates across sheets and it doesn't matter if our table or column names change, this method will keep working. So which methods should you use? Well, there is the standard references and the indirect method. They're quicker to apply, but can have some issues in some circumstances. Alternatively, there's the named range and dynamic array method. They have a two-step process, but they are more robust. 
If you like this video, why not click there to subscribe? And if you want to know more about issues with data validation lists, that's the place you need to click. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.